In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the PMC render kernel. I'm starting off with the uh, robot and pilot scene. We have these two characters looking through a magnifying glass. As you can see, the uh, magnifying glass is refracting the light to this point right here on this box. And uh, if you compare this to the, uh, the same uh, image in the previous video when we were using the uh, path tracing kernel, you can see this is a, a, a big improvement. Looks much more realistic. You can also see that the, uh, the light bouncing off the reflective materials here is also creating caustic light patterns on the ground. And you don't have to do anything extra in order to get these uh, caustic light patterns, which is, which is one of the nice things about using this kernel. The downside is, of course, that it does take more time to render these uh, to get them to look nice and clear. So in this version of the scene, I'm using the PMC test kernel, which I set up in a previous video. And you can see its attributes are right here. So these settings are all the same as they are in the other kernels, of course. The settings that we're mostly concerned with are down here under PMC. And again, we have uh, some settings which are repeats. So the max diffuse depth and the max specular depth we've talked about in the uh, path tracing and direct light kernel videos. So I'm not going to um, go into those too much here, but I'll talk about exploration strength. So according to the documentation, this specifies how long the kernel investigates good paths before it tries to find a new path. So low value can create a noisy image, while large values can create a splotchy image. So this is something that you kind of want to test and see if it helps to reduce either noise artifacts that you might be having or if it speeds up the render. So let's bring this down to a low value and see what the result is in this scene. I'm going to do some editing in this scene because these do take a, a few minutes to render uh, just to save a little bit of time. So uh, the render times that you see in the video might not uh, reflect reality, um, but it still only takes a few moments to render each image. You can see right here, this is definitely a much noisier result here in the caustic uh, light pattern. So that's looking pretty noisy and uh, <clears throat> let's bring it up to its full value and see how that looks. Yeah, you can see immediately we get a whole lot of splotchiness all over the place, especially here down in the shadows. It also seems to take a little bit longer to render. So let's see what happens if we put down to a setting of like 2.7. So the direct light importance is another interesting setting that could apply to this scene. Uh, the higher this setting is, the more time Octane is going to devote to problem areas such as this part right here where we have this caustic light pattern. So let's bring this up and see how it affects the scene. If this value is brought down, then what we're going to find is that Octane is going to spend more time devoted to uh, rendering uh, areas that might be in shadow that uh, might be problematic and uh, and have might have more indirect light bounces in them. But you can see immediately that, that it does seem to have uh, a huge influence on this bright area right here and also some of the other bright spots in the render. So the max rejects uh, slider right here controls the bias of the render. So when we talk about Octane being an unbiased renderer, that means that unbiased means it is more physically accurate and uses fewer cheats to create a realistic image. Uh, the more biased a renderer is, the more blurring will be added in order to reduce render time, but also the less physically accurate it will be. So by using the max reject slider, you can kind of balance between something that is more physically accurate or something that renders a little bit faster. The lower this value, the more biased the render will be. So if I set this down to 10, it's going to be a little less physically accurate result. It might not have a huge influence on this particular scene, but if you're working in a scene, you know, scenes that tend to be very difficult to render are ones that have a lot of indirect light bounces. So interiors with a lot of parts that are in shadow with low levels of light can be uh, difficult uh, to render without noise. In this particular scene, it might not make uh, that big a difference. But if I bring it all the way up, it's probably going to take a lot longer to render, but will be more physically accurate. Again, totally depends on the scene.
So you can see this render is fairly slow, so I'm going to reduce that down to its default value of 500. The caustic blur is a bit more uh, self-explanatory. Uh, it's adding, it, by raising this value, you'll be adding a slight blur to the caustic light patterns that you see on the ground here in this area right there. Um, so uh, it will reduce the amount of noise that you see in these spots, but it also could add a little bit of softness, which may or may not be de desirable. If I set this to, uh, say, 0.1, you can see how it's spread out that caustic light pattern. It's, it's not nearly as satisfying as it was before. So you probably don't want to raise that too high in this scene, which seems to feature caustic. So if I set it to 0.02, you can see it's a bit more spread out. We don't have that nice shape that is caused by the light refracting through the magnifying lens. But you can see it is very bright. And not quite as noisy as it comes in there. Let's set this back down. So let's start to try 005, see how that looks. So you can see now we have a really bright, intense caustic light pattern right here, uh, which is kind of cool. The GI clamp setting we discussed in uh, the previous video on path tracing, reducing this can help reduce the number of bright fireflies that you see in the, in the scene on the highlights. Um, it can reduce the energy in the scene as well, so you want to kind of use this with caution. If I set this down to 10, you can see it might uh, speed up the render a little bit and also reduce some of those fireflies. You can see taking it down to 10 though, we, re we lose a lot of this brightness here that we had before. So if I set this to, let's say 100. So you can see a value of 100 um, reduces the noise somewhat, but we lose a lot of that intensity there. So I'm gonna go back up to, let's try 1000. We had 500 before, so let's see what 1000 does. So you can see in this uh, scene, uh, increasing the GI clamp has a really dramatic effect on this caustic light pattern right here. The parallelism slider we discussed in the path tracing uh, video. High values require more memory, but can also reduce render time. And this, of course, depends entirely on your GPU architecture. It won't affect the quality of the render, though. The path termination value, uh, increasing this can increase render speed, but may cause uh, a higher amount of noise in dark areas. I'm going to set this to 0.8. And let's set this, uh, let's leave that where it is. The work chunk size is the number of work blocks done per kernel run. So that's what the documentation says. But increasing this value increases the memory requirement on the system, but does not affect overall memory usage and may increase render speed. So that's just determining how much of the memory available in the system is devoted to the render. So you can try increasing it. It will mean that you're drawing more memory for the render for your system but it can increase rend or it can decrease render time. So let's set this up to 18 and see if that makes a significant difference. So that covers the basics of working with the PMC render kernel. I recommend taking a scene like this that has a lot of caustic light reflections and uh, refractions and experiment with the settings as well as the uh, comparing it with the results you get with using path tracing and see if you can balance out a really nice looking render with a low render time.